I, f I felt it resonated where he was at, that uh, blah, all right, that uh, has moved into so many people's lives, just a, you know, just a, I'm here, but I'm just here, you know? And how many knows as believers, God wants us to be um, in touch, in tune with everything that he's doing? He said, be sober and be vigilant, amen, to be wide awake, if you will, in the presence of God. And Pastor Preston began to read uh, and encouraged from Romans 8, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I've already got this sermon ready to go, and he's getting ready to preach on part of this sermon from Romans 8, but he didn't. Uh, he just read over part of what I'm going to read. But Romans chapter 8 and verse number 30, I'm just going to read all this is good, of course. Many of you have a lot of this memorized, and I could spend a lot of time uh, on this, but I just want to read from Romans 8:30 uh, into verse 32, <clears throat> and those whom he, being God, predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Aren't you happy that after all the things listed in Romans 8 and knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ that walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit? That as the Lord tells us in Romans 8 and Pastor Preston shared this morning, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then the writer of Romans continues by saying that there is a, a progressive um, chain of events that God has destined every believer for, every person that comes to faith in Jesus Christ. And that is, before you were even born, God had a plan for your life. The psalmist said that even while in his mother's womb, that the Lord was planning out his days. What a comfort to know that. What an encouragement and a blessing. And it's a different sermon tonight, but think about the fact that all of our inward parts, the Bible says the Lord already knew. All of our thoughts, the Bible says, he knows before they even roll off of our tongue. That's a scary thought sometime in and of itself, amen. But think about the fact that God who foreknew and predestined you for who you are and who you were going to be knew what he had in store for your life. But think about if we are sitting and we are idly watching the world go by and every day of life go by, and if we're not smack dab in the middle of what God called us to do. Lord, help us, huh? I truly believe if every single believer was seeking God with their whole heart, you might say, well, you, that's, that's awful, uh, you know, bold to say that they're not. Well, I believe our world would be changing progressively faster with the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached. I believe our city would be changed more and more if more Christians and believers would move from just coming in to the doors on a Sunday and coming in and saying, I punched my spiritual time card, they would come in and say, I've got a purpose. God knew me. God foreknew me. He knew me in my mother's womb. He created me. He has a destiny for my life. He has purpose for my life. If more believers and Christians were seeking that destiny and that purpose and smack dab in the middle of where God wants us to be, I believe our world would be a different place today. Amen? Well, that's another sermon, all right? But he said this. There's a chain of events. He predestined. Those that he predestined, he also called. Thank God that we are called. Those that he called, he also justified. Praise God for justification. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. Can you say hallelujah? What then, verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? And I believe he was really talking about all of chapter 8 of Romans, but even that fact that the Lord has predestined, the Lord has called, the Lord has justified, the Lord is glorifying us and moving us to that place of ultimate glorification in heaven one day. The writer of Romans said, what do you have to say about these things when you read them? What do you First have come to your mind, oh, well, I've heard all that before. Or, well, that sounds really good and kind of makes me feel butterflies or, you know, on the inside get chilled bumps or whatever it might be, goose bumps. But you know what? He said, what shall we say to these things? Here's what we need to say. If God is for us, who can be against us? 
Let me say that again. If God is for us, then who can be against us? Verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all. How will he not also with him freely give us all things? What a powerful, powerful passage of Scripture. Tonight I want to preach for a little while on the thought, God is for me. God is for me. Tonight I have already grabbed a hold of this for my own life. And I trust tonight that there's going to be people in this building that you are going to grab a hold of this for your life, that God is for you. And if God is for you, then who in the world can be against you? You see, I want you to know that in being called by God and having a purpose for God, and and I truly believe with all my heart what I was praying just a moment ago as we were moving out of worship and getting ready to move into God's word, this church, messenger church, this family of God, this house of worship, this place to come together and receive from God's word, there has been in the almost 17 years that I have been here, I have heard uh, prophecies and, and message in tongues and interpretations and men of God that have come in not knowing uh, anything about this place and, and, and women of God that have come in that have shared messages and prophecies that God has us on the horizon of greatness, that God has called and, and, and predestined this place for greatness. And I don't know about you, but I believe that not only are we on the edge, I believe we've already stepped into the greatness that God has. You say, well, how do you figure? Well, I know that we are reaching people that many people that come in here on a Sunday morning don't even realize. Amen, Pastor Mike and Sherry, we are reaching people in our ministry that is taking place in Messenger STL. We are reaching people through the Women's Safe House ministry. We are reaching people through youth ministry. We are reaching kids that we don't see come in sometimes into our service through our children's pastor and our staff and children's ministry. And I'm believing God that as we're moving through this December and think about it coming out of one year and going to the next one, I've got vision and I've got purpose that God is taking us to a different level to where we can say and should say, God, you spoke these things for Messenger Church. I heard them and I've heard about them and I'm going to dig in with everything that I have to say, Lord, those that you called, you have justified. Those that you justified, you have glorified. And if God be for us, then who in the world can be against us? And I'm believing God for great things. If you believe it, come on, put your hands together tonight. Hallelujah. You see, Paul had a lot of things to say, and we're going to look at that here a little bit later, but I like to look to the Old Testament and to the New Testament of things that were said. And before we do that, after I had just read, if God is for us, who can be against us? What shall we say to the things that were read about not being separated from God's love and not being condemned, but walking after the spirit and not after the flesh? And verse 32, he said, it was the Lord that did not spare his own son but deliver Jesus upon the cross for us all. And if we would just think about the fact, saints, if he did that, how will he not also through Jesus give us all things? What are you asking for? What are you believing for that you are going to grab a hold of a verse that says, if God be for me, who could be against me? I want to challenge you tonight. I want to challenge you that if you are believing God for loved ones that are lost, if God be for you, who can be against you? I want to challenge you tonight if you're believing God to minister through you and the calling that he's placed upon your life, if God be for you, who can be against you? And tonight, I believe we have that victory in Jesus' name. And in Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, I want you to look with me there from God's word, and there was actually in Joshua chapter 1, this, if God be for us, who can be against us, that was really grabbed a hold of as Joshua was being placed in as a leader of the children of Israel after the death of Moses. 
Joshua 1, verse 1 says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. Now think about this. A report had come that it was undoubtedly a report that brought sadness and grief. Here Joshua had been following and the children of Israel following Moses, and yet Joshua was told Moses has died. Moses has died. But Joshua, I want to tell you that you are the guy that's going to step up and you are going to lead my people to claim and lay hold of that that I have given you. If God be for us, who can be against us? Can you imagine Joshua? Joshua thinking, my goodness, how in the world, wouldn't you feel that way if it was Moses you were following? How in the world can I do what I'm supposed to do, but yet it was the Lord? I'm so thankful for the word of God that tells us that if we will but humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, it is God that will exalt us in due time. I'm so glad that it's not promotion that comes from the east or promotion that comes from the west, but promotion that comes from the Lord. Come on now, somebody. And it's the Lord's mighty right hand that will uphold you. And Joshua was told, stand up, son, and step into what God has called you to do. And look what he said in verse 3, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend into the desert and to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Listen, in this. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life, church. That's an if God is for us, who can be against a statement to the man of God that was being called to step into a great role, but Joshua had to realize, I can't step into Moses' shoes because they're not going to fit exactly right, but God is having me step in to a place, and he's saying, son, I'm going to give you what I said would give you. And he's saying, son, why don't you just get ready to do a little territorial marching and a little territorial walking and say, I set my foot here. It belongs to the people of God. Oh, come on, somebody. I set my foot here. It belongs to the people of God. I don't know what you feel when you're thinking about that tonight, but I think about if you're praying for something, if you're believing for something from God, you need to take some time. And if you kneel down in prayer, you need to get up in your prayer closet or your war room, if you will, and you need to start walking and say, I claim what God has promised me in Jesus' name, and I won't give up, give over, or give in until God blesses me with that that he said he would. Come on, put your hands together tonight and give God praise. You see, he said here, your territory, it's going to extend, it's going to expand. And no one's going to be able to stand against you, Joshua, all the days of your life. Why? Why don't you tell somebody beside you, if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen? And that's what he said. Now, look, he said here, as I was with Moses, praise God, so I will be with you. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. What a promise from God saying to this leader that is stepping in. Now, can I say tonight that I'm so thankful for heritage that I have, heritage that I have within my family, and I praise God for, for Pentecostal heritage and for heritage in the faith. I praise God for people that are mentors in my life and people that have been people I can look to as people of faith and heroes in the faith to follow. Sometimes I believe that we get so much into the not looking back and simply looking forward that we don't realize that we can learn and even grow and go further forward if we will use that, that we can look behind us and see. 
Did you hear me tonight? You see, um, if I had never heard some of the testimonies of my little 84-year-old grandmother that was hunched over like this, and she would stand up to testify, and it would be a 20-minute sermonette as she would begin to talk about the good things God had done, if I didn't have some of those testimonies, I couldn't look back in times I was going through struggles and saying just like the Lord said to Joshua here, he said, Joshua, no something. You're not in this all by yourself. You're not in this alone, but I'm going to be with you just like you saw me with Moses. Aren't you glad for people that we can look to that have served the Lord, that have lived for God, that caused us to realize, hey, I've got endurance that I can have in the faith. I've got to keep on keeping on that I can have in the faith. I can run this race with patience that the Lord has set before me because I've got people that I can look to. I would not be here today if it was not for the people that prayed for me. Come on. I wouldn't be here today if it was not for the people that encouraged me in the faith. I've shared this before, but some people, when I was first called to preach, I remember being so excited, going to some people and telling them I was just excited. Other ministers, other pastors, and some of those people would have a look on their face, almost as if they suddenly had something very sour put in their mouth. You know what I mean? They would have that look on their face. Oh, you are, you know? And these are people that have been in the ministry. And I'm thinking, dear God, what in the world's the matter with them? And they'd say, are you sure, you know? Well, thank you for that vote of confidence from the Lord, you know? And, and then they would, well, uh, not only do you need to be sure, but listen, I mean, you've got a hard road ahead of you, son. I appreciate people, you know, that want to talk, but I don't want to hear about all the hard road ahead of me. Come on now, somebody. I, I like the fact when I sat down with my pastor in my home church, I, I had already talked with my family, and I talked to him, and Pastor Joe Skiles looked over the desk, crossed at me, and he said, man, Troy, that is awesome. Let's get you up behind the pulpit. How about preaching next Sunday night? Well, I couldn't preach my way out of a wet paper bag, you know. But he just knew that, hey, the calling of God is there. Step into what God has called you to do. I think about uh, my, my cousin, Pastor Mike there, and his mother, who, of course, uh, Mike's mom and dad were pastors of this church for many years, my Uncle Bob and Aunt Ruby. And I remember Uncle Bob had already went home to be with the Lord and was in heaven. But I went and sat down with my Aunt Ruby, or many of you knew her as Sister Johnson or Sister Brewer. And I remember sitting down with Aunt Ruby and, and me and Lisa together and saying, feel called into the ministry, Aunt Ruby. Feel called to preach. And she was so excited and so happy. And she said, son, she said, don't give up and don't wait, but get in with everything you've got to preach the gospel because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Preach now as much as you can preach. Sing now as much as you can sing. You know what? That wisdom is something that I can look to and say, thank God that that was a saint of God, that the Lord was with her. I remember looking out even in this building and seeing her back there worshiping and praising in God, getting happy and laughing in the spirit. I thank God for men and women of God that just like Joshua was told by the Lord, son, you can stand with confidence that I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you because I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. If you're glad for that, come on, put your hands together once again tonight and give the Lord praise. Amen. So he said, I'm going to be with you. And then he said, verse 6, be strong <laughs> and be courageous because you will. Now, that's encouraging words. Not, oh, boy, I mean, you're getting ready to do this for God. You better really, really get ready because everything's going to go wrong. No, you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Verse 7, he says it again, be strong. And don't just be courageous, but be very courageous. Look here. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. In other words, Joshua, don't leave the principles of the word of God. If you want God on your side and claiming things for your life, if God is for me, who can be against me? 
Don't ever deviate from the word. Preach the word, live the word, read the word, quote the word, pray the word of God. Amen? So he said, hold on to this. Meditate on it. Let it be on your lips day and night that you may be careful to do everything written there. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Here he says it again. Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you everywhere that you go. So then you know what Joshua did? He had grabbed a hold of, oh my Lord, if God is for me, then who in the world can be against me? And Joshua ordered the officers of the people, said go through the camp, tell all the people, get your stuff ready. Three days from now, you're going to cross the Jordan and we are going to go in and take possession of that that God has called us to take possession of. What am I saying tonight? I'm telling you, if God is for you, who can be against you? If God has made a promise, don't give up, but grab a hold and take possession of that that God has promised you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, we find another story from God's word that is found in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. 2 Kings chapter 6 and a familiar passage of scripture, uh, another, of course, gentleman that had been following a great leader in Elijah, and of course, Elisha, that was called by the Lord and had cried out for that double portion of anointing, that mantle of anointing from Elijah as he served him and washed his hands and did what he needed to do to serve Elijah. And in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse number 8, the Bible says, now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and time again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram and he summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? Verse 12, none of us, my lord the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. In other words, the man of God was in touch with what was going on. Now, I can't help but think about the fact Um, instead of us always being against everything that is going on, and, and we have a right, there's a lot of things to be against that's going on in our government today. Amen? in our nation today, in the world today. But how about being so in touch, and Pastor touched on this some this morning, how about being so in touch with praying for the leaders of our nation that we are saying, God, please lead them and guide them and direct them because it's really easy to say negative things about people. It's a lot harder to pray and say, God, not my will, but yours be done. Well, You see, the king here had to realize that the man of God, the prophet, could know the very words that was spoken even in the king's most secret place. Verse 13, go find out where he is, the king ordered. Find this Elisha so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord, the servant said. What shall we do, the servant asked. Have you ever felt surrounded? Amen. Have you ever felt surrounded in a situation where you were seeking God and praying for something? Well, here's what the man of God said. Don't be afraid. Verse 16. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. 
The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then the man of God, Elisha, prayed, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And as the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, strike this army with blindness. And what did he do? He struck them with blindness just as the man of God had asked for, God help us to even be able to see with these eyes, if God is for us, who can be against us? It's so easy to look at the news stories that pop up on your phone when you get up in the morning and hear of the tragedies going on in the world around us, going down news feeds of social media and being ready to go in a dark room and cover your head. Come on, somebody. But then know beyond a shadow of a doubt, hey, hold on a minute. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I've been called by God. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Why should we shudder in fear when it's time to preach the gospel more than ever before? If you believe that, come on, put your hands together right now. Now you see, in God's word, as I'm moving toward a close tonight, we will find in 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 4, the Word of God gives us instruction. Many of you could quote the Scripture, but it blesses me so much. You, dear children, are from God. You have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. I like the New Living Translation, 1 John 4 and 4. You belong to God. Look at somebody beside you and say, you belong to God. I just know you do. Amen. You belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. How many knows we got the victory? Five of you do. Praise the Lord. Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? I remember singing it, Sister DeClue, in the building on South 10 Mile Drive in Jefferson City. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Christians, let's stand up and boldly say in the faith, if God be for me, Who can be against me? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Lastly tonight, as the musicians are coming, I want to read to you Psalm 56 and verse 9. Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this I will know that God is for me. You know, we should expect that our enemies that are coming against us are going to turn around and run the other way. Come on, somebody. Our enemies that we are seeking God and praying for the Lord to minister, the enemy's got to turn around because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberty. And when God shows up, You see, the enemy might rush in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against that enemy. And the psalmist said, when my enemies turn around and tuck tail and run after I've called for help, it's a sure sign that God is for me and not against me. Psalm 118 and 6, the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? What can mere mortals do to me? Lastly tonight, in Psalms 144, and you can stand with me all across the building. Psalm 144, Jim, you can put that up on the screen. Psalm 144, the Word of God gives a passage of Scripture that shows me the psalmist would write things about being very in touch with times of turmoil and times of struggle. Times of letting his emotions be very, very seen by God. The psalmist would write things like, my tears have been my meat day and night. Lord, where are you? Help God. Help God. The godly man seems to have perished in the world that we live in. 
And yet what I loved about the Psalms and have loved for so long, not only is there worship songs to God, but in the Psalms we find where there's just some straight openness with the Lord. And how many knows God knows everything anyway? So why, why not just be open and honest with God, huh? And you find here where the psalmist, I believe, just thought, hey, I'm tired of talking about these, these soft things and these things that are just kind of meek and mild. And, and I'm ready to talk about the things that concern what we're in, and that is we are in a war. How many believes we're in a war? Huh? <clears throat> My son spent this weekend in training in the Army National Guard, and they have been uh, discussing deployment time to fight this wickedness of terrorism and the ISIS groups that are forming all over this world, wreaking havoc and killing torturing, cutting the heads off of Christians, putting little children of Christian families in dog cages and mistreating and belittling people and evil wickedness. And Joshua, in talking, has said, Dad, this is something that it is going to have to be fought against and literally taken out completely because it's like a cancer that is eating away. And all they would like to do, they would like nothing more than to say, we will rule and reign over this world. That's what their desire is, and it's very serious. And I believe the psalmist, Psalm of David here in Psalm 144, because David was not only a guy that played the harp and sang songs, David was a warrior. Amen? Psalm 144, praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. The King James said, blessed be the Lord my strength that teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. What is this, you know, these pictures of our Lord and Savior that artists have depicted that he's just, you know, so meek and mild where Jesus himself said, look, from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. God help us as Christians to say, if God before me, who can be against me? Psalm 144, verse 2, he said, he is my loving God and my fortress. He's my stronghold and he's my deliverer. He's my shield. He's the one in whom I take refuge. He subdues people's under me. Come on now. He said, Lord, what are human beings that you care for them? Mere mortals that you think of them. We are all like a breath. The days of our life like a fleeting shadow. Parch your heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they will smoke. Send forth the lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows around them. Verse 7, reach down your hand from on high and deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. And look what the psalmist said, this warrior when he was saying, God, why don't you come down here and just take care of things? Because I know if you before me, who can be against me? And then he stopped and said, I will sing a new song to you. My God, on ten-string lyre, I will make music to you. To the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David. Glory be to God. From the deadly sword, he's delivered me. He's rescued me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons in their youth, will be like nurtured plants, and daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Do you know that our young men today that are coming up and young ladies coming up today, it's the responsibility of men and women in the church to make sure that young men are growing up as young men and young ladies are growing up as young ladies. Come on now. Because we have a world out there that's trying to twist that whole thing around. And David said, Lord, if you'll do this, and I can confirm you're for me, not against me, you'll come down and do what, do what you said you would do, then you know what? Our young men are going to be established like you said they would be. Our young ladies are going to be placed like pillars of strength. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. 
Our sheep will increase by thousands. By ten thousands in our field, our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed be the people whose God is the Lord. Aren't you thankful? If God is for us, who can be against us? Come on, put your hands together right now all across this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 